Oh good, I'm really glad that you're here. I wanna show you what I've been working on and we'll answer some questions too. Okay, so uh, if you will recall, this is our office building. So this is where my office is now. And then uh, we have a couple other workstations we're setting up here. And then my office is over there. I wanna show you what it is I've been working on. Okay, so I have started some seeds already, but as you can see, these ones have been reaching. So my friend said, the south facing window might not be enough. We might need some grow lights. So we're gonna unbox those and set those up together. And I'm gonna plant some more seeds, show you how cool these starting trays are, but also answer some really frequent questions that come up about minimalism. And hopefully you'll be able to declutter faster and achieve it faster if that's your goal. Okay, so question number one, do you have a TV? We didn't get rid of our TV when we first became minimalist, and we actually had a TV mounted on the wall when we first moved into this house. But then when Tom and I redid our family room and took that over as our bedroom, we got rid of the TV at that point. And then we just started using a portable DVD player for the kids and didn't have a TV at all. And that worked really well. And then we now just got a TV again. So in our extra bedroom, we have a TV now on top of a dresser. And so it's just on a stand, so it's very easy to remove from that room. It's very small, <laughs> it's a very small TV. So we do have one, but uh, it doesn't get watched a whole lot. I would say, I don't have anything against TV. I think it's just over time as I've had more space in life and my, I think my tastes have just kind of changed. Like I just don't have as much of like an appetite for it anymore. I don't know, does that, that's a weird way to say it, isn't it? I just, I don't feel like I'm missing out when I'm not watching it anymore. From time to time, Tom and I will still get into a series, but um, we haven't watched anything in a long time. And I just find myself, I would rather read because that actually like relaxes my brain. So these are all flowers that I planted. There's a couple here that didn't come up. So I'm gonna replant those today. And then here I did end up planting lemongrass. So thank you for the input on that, <laughs> that that is helpful. And then I just have these little plastic tags that I'm using to label them with. I know Jess from um, Roots and Refuge, she had said like she has tried everything as far as like stakes and marking. And really the only thing that works well are these plastic tags. I have very little experience with this, but I trust her because she has done a ton of this. <laughs> so I got some of these as well. Question number two, what was the hardest part of your journey? For some reason, I didn't have a hard time partying with things like the physical things. It was more my concern about what other people would think. Like I really worried, okay, if I'm getting rid of toys and my mom had got them for us at a garage sale or uh, someone else or they were gifts, or if someone comes into our home and it looks too sparse, then what are they gonna think? And so even though I haven't, I'm not generally one to worry too much about what other people think, but yet I didn't want anyone to think that I was like neglecting our children or somehow depriving them of their childhood. And I think I really feared like being misunderstood and for people to not understand why I was doing what I was doing because it was so counter cultural at the time that it really, for most people, it didn't actually seem to make sense what we were doing. And so that was probably the hardest part was me feeling like I always had to be ready. Like if someone noticed a birthday gift was gone, what would I say? If someone came in the house and thought it was too sparse, what would I say? And like being <laughs> at the ready with like all of my justifications for it. Luckily now I don't worry about that so much. And so that's good. <laughs> so let's see, I think we're gonna plant some of these cucumbers straight eights. I think those would be good. Next question, do you have any minimalist parenting resources? So my favorite book for parenting from a minimalist perspective is hands down simplicity parenting. And today's video is sponsored by Blinkist and you can find simplicity parenting on Blinkist. And so what I love about Blinkist, it's an app. And what they do is they take nonfiction books. They have over 5,500 and they boil it down to blinks or the main points. Here's what's so neat. You can play the blinks and listen to it or you can read the blinks. Whoops, it's starting now. <laughs> Wait, stop. Or you can read the blinks. <laughs> Today I was reading blinks when I was at the dentist with the kids, but I also like to listen to them when I'm getting ready in the morning or driving. I am amazed 
at how you can really get the gist of a book by listening to the blinks. And what I really like about Simplicity Parenting, I truly, I please read it, please listen to it on Blinkist. It is so important, but it talks about how our children cannot maintain the pace of life that we've been asking of them. And I think most of us as parents, we kind of sense that and we know that. But I was also just listening, uh, the blinks I was reading today were on it's, it's a book called, I Know How She Does It. So instead of how does she do it, it's I know how she does it. And it was fascinating about knowing the most productive time for us. So those of us who struggle with productivity and motivation to know what time of day is most productive, what day of the week is most productive. So it was fascinating. So that book is called, I Know How She Does That. And so I really appreciate the format and how this information is delivered to us. It's kind of like, it's kind of a minimalist way that it's delivered to us. It feels very practical and doable and usable. So that's what I love about Blinkist. And now they also have Blinkist Connect where someone else can connect to your account as well. So it's kind of like getting two memberships for one. If you want your spouse or partner to listen to Simplicity Parenting, or if there's someone else who you enjoy talking about books with and holding each other accountable and, and reading things together. And right now you can get Blinkist Premium for 20 25% off and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. Use our link down below and you can start your free seven day trial today. Okay, so let's plant, maybe I should grab these zinnias that didn't come up. We'll reseed those quick and then we're gonna plant some cucumbers while we continue to visit. So these are raspberry lemonade zinnias, snowball marigolds, and white wedding zinnias. So the raspberry lemonade, we have a few missing. Um, did you sell anything when you were doing your main decluttering? So initially, I didn't tell Tom what we were doing. I was just donating everything, but again, most of it didn't have much value. So I didn't sell anything in the beginning. When we went to move out of my our townhouse was when I told Tom about what we were doing. And then we decided that we would have a $50 minimum. Like something had, not that we paid $50, like it would have to be worth, like we would get $50 for it if we sold it. And so uh, when we were moving, we moved from our townhouse into my parents' basement, not knowing where we would go next, but hoping to get into the country, live in the country somewhere. Um, and then it was about six months later that our current house became available. And so we didn't know though, um, like our furniture in our townhouse, we didn't know if we would use it in our next house. So we sold a lot of it. I'm trying to think though, but beyond that, I think there was like some cute computer and camera stuff we might have sold, but it was very little. Now at that time there wasn't Facebook Marketplace, so it was either Craigslist or eBay. And I didn't really feel comfortable doing that myself. Like I didn't want to be lining up for people to come to our house and if Tom wasn't home. So I let him manage all of that. It just, it was a lot of work, right? And I just really wanted our house decluttered. And so mostly we donated everything. But I think if you look at big picture now, I buy so much less than I did then. And I'm so careful with my purchases that I feel like we're money ahead. Could we have gotten more? See the cucumber seeds? <laughs> could we have gotten more? Uh, yes, we could have gotten more money for our stuff. And honestly, at the time, it would have been helpful too. But I just knew I didn't have the bandwidth to manage that. And so we didn't. And now when I look back, it's totally okay, right? So um, I think if you need the money and if you have the bandwidth to do it and it's easy to do where you live, then I think that's great. I think Marketplace makes it especially easy. But if not, I would be willing to let that stuff go and trust that in the end, it's all gonna work out. All right, so then I just push these down into the dirt. And you know, overall, my family was incredibly understanding. Uh, my mom was like so gracious with me and anyone who had given us gifts. There was very few awkward moments with it and I'm very grateful for that, but I know it's not the experience of everyone. And so if you have family members or friends or anyone in your life that gives you a hard time, I would just say you just have to be really resolved and know why you're doing what you're doing. And I would just encourage you to keep going because the benefits are so worth it and no one else has to live in your house, right? Like. So really, they shouldn't get a say in it. And I don't intentionally ever want to offend anyone, but I just now, especially that we've been living this way for like eight years, I could not I could not imagine going back. It is so much better. Like it has made life so much better and richer that it's, to me, it's worth the discomfort comfort or potentially offending someone. All right, I think we should use some green for the cucumbers, right? All right, these are straight eight 
So, and I do want to keep track of the different varieties that we're using. I haven't done a good job of that in the past, uh, but I do know that some are better than others. So, and originally I'm like, I want to have like a notebook as like a garden notebook to keep all of this in. And I'm like, just add it to your Google Keep and your phone, Don, right? Like make that and just put it in there. Like a, a notebook would be so cute and fun, but like, let's be realistic. Like I'm, I will probably misplace it. Even with a highly simplified house, I probably will. Okay, so these are straight eight. I'm just gonna put eight cucumber. I really wish I had my fine point to Sharpie right now. When you have, you know, five other people in your house, sometimes stuff doesn't always stay where you put it. Okay. So now I want to show you how these trays work and we'll keep answering questions. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it comes and I'll show you how you assemble it. Well, assemble is a strong word. It's really easy. And then actually the there's a tray under here. I had taken it off the other ones because they're already outgrowing it. So we won't use this. We'll use this in a little bit. This is the water mat. We'll talk about this. Okay, the really cool part though are these little um, like pellets that are in the tray and how they expand when water is added to them. So in my novice experience, what I really like about these trays is the self-watering mat. So the bottom becomes a water reservoir and then the mat wicks the water up and evenly waters everything. And so even these seeds that I've already started, I have not had to water them once. I filled it at the beginning, it's been a week and um, I haven't had to add to it. I probably will like tomorrow maybe. And so that is always the stressful part to me about this whole process is knowing when to water. So you put the mat down and then the tray trays and then the little pellets um, and so you have to make sure that all the pellets have the flat side down so that when they expand they can go straight up and then you pour warm water on it and it's just like it's like I don't know the, <laughs> I'm trying to think what those things are called that grow when they go to water so it was really fun the first set I did with the kids and they just thought it was the coolest um, so it's kind of fun to watch and then you break up the material and then you can plant the seeds in it so another question that came up is how did you decide where to donate your items now i think this really comes down to how much of bandwidth that you have i at the time did not have a lot of bandwidth to research donation centers and all of that so there was two that i went to one is um community ran and i know all the profits like stay in the community and we had gotten tons of nice stuff for very inexpensive there. I really appreciated that they keep their prices pretty low. And so I tried to bring as much there as possible. They had kind of limited donation hours and they were more selective with what they would take. And so there were some days where I just went to Goodwill. And I know that sometimes Goodwill gets bad press or they have gotten bad press and different things, but they also do do a lot of good in a lot of the communities that they're in. And I just didn't have the bandwidth to be worried about donation hours and if they'll take things. Like if it came down to that, like I wouldn't take a load that day because I was stressed out about knowing, you know, if the other place would take it, I just gave myself permission to take it to Goodwill. And like, that's okay, right? Like for me, I was drowning in stuff in, in my home and motherhood and all of that. Like I needed to get my head back above water, right? And so if you're in that position, I think just take the path of least resistance for now. And then down the road, you can be much more selective with where everything goes. Like I would not be doing this right now if our house was still how it was in the past because I would be feeling guilty that I need to be cleaning and organizing and not having the energy to do so, right? And so big picture, I don't think it matters as much as we think. We're not gonna save the world or ruin the world with a few trips to a donation center. Another question is how do you define minimalism? So for me, it really comes down to that I want everything in our home to be something that we're currently using either today or within the next 12 months. So, uh, you know, there's some definitions that are like, have only things that you find useful or beautiful. I find a lot of things beautiful, so I could have more like decorative things and those types of things in my house, but really I found that they start to feel like 
clutter and I don't enjoy maintaining them. And so I even try to limit the number of beautiful things or things that might spark joy in our home to a very few. I mean, we have very little decor. We've tried to do more with like the architecture of our home. So putting in built-in shelves and painting our lower cabinets and adding some board and batten and those types of things that add some visual interest without having to have more items. But for me, at least the season we're in right now, I only wanna have things in our home that we are currently using. And part of the reasoning behind this too is again, that correlation between our stuff and the messages that it's sending us. So we've talked about the silent to-do list, how every, every item in our home is sending us a message. And if I have things in our home that we're not using, that are just taking up space that I have to organize and take care of, but we're not using, they, those things send me negative messages. Why did you buy this? Why aren't you using it? Why aren't you taking better care of it? You should incorporate this into your life. Like all of a sudden my stuff is telling me what I need to be doing, right? It's very sneaky, it's very covert. Uh, you have to listen really hard <laughs> to hear it. But once you become aware of it, you're just like, no, ew, I don't want that stuff in my house. And so that's where I think I can get rid of things very easily now because I'm so sensitive to how it makes me feel in my home. And I'm very sensitive to clutter now and the stress that just collectively things cause and clutter causes. And so it, it has become very easy for me now to declutter things. And from the outside, it could almost look like I'm being wasteful or I don't care or I'm being rash in my decision making, but it's actually not that at all. It's just become so much easier because I am protective now of my time and my energy and how our house feels when it's really simplified and we just have the things we're using. And so I'm trying to like maintain that at all costs. And so if that means donating something that we spent money on and donating something that was a gift, I'm willing to do that now. Again, I'm never intentionally trying to offend anyone, but I'm very protective of it and I'm willing to admit if I've made a mistake, which still happens from time to time, but really not that often at all. How has minimalism impacted your relationships? This is perhaps one of my favorite parts about simplifying our home. So like I said, when, when I started this journey, I was a stay-at-home mom. And so even though our culture has gotten pretty good about you know, sending this message that even if a woman stays home with her kids, there should still be help from her partner and it should be, there should be more equality and she shouldn't just have to do everything. And so the messaging was very pro stay at home moms, I think. However, I was still having such a hard time staying on top of everything. And I personally felt like I wasn't necessarily pulling my weight. And it looked differently depending on the day. Some days I felt guilty and shameful. Other days I felt resentful, like, well, I wish I got to go to work and then somebody else would have to worry about this mess and it wouldn't just be my burden, right? And so what I found is as I simplified my home, it actually got much easier to share the load with Tom because the kitchen wasn't overwhelming. It was very easy to take care of the dishes after a meal. It was easy to clean up after the kids. It almost felt like we fell into more of a rhythm of helping each other because neither of us was overwhelmed by it anymore. And neither of us felt like, well, that's all your mess or why do you have all this extra stuff in here? Or why is it just so hard? <laughs> why does it take so long? And so as we lowered our inventory and simplified our home, things that had kind of been a sticking point in the past, it became, it became much easier to share the load and to work together on it and to divide it up and decide who would do what because it wasn't overwhelming to either of us anymore. So that's been one of the best things. I know we ran into a friend when we were in Florida and she said, yeah, well, you know, one of the most common fights between my spouse and I is my stuff and how much stuff I have. And I'm like, I understand that. And that stinks, right? Like, um, and so if this appeals to you, maybe you do need to make some sacrifices with, I use that term, sacrifices. <laughs> it's like, uh, I use that term loosely, but maybe you do need to move some of your beloved things out of the kitchen so that it, it functions better for your family and so that others can help more. Maybe there's baking things you don't use, appliances. Maybe you have just too much food storage in there that makes it hard to manage. It makes it feel cluttered. Uh, serving dishes, china, different things that you don't use on a regular basis. And so maybe you could do an experiment and move those things out and just see if it's naturally then easier for everyone in your house to do the things that need to get done in there on a daily basis. 
And so it's been really cool how that has dissolved some of that. It doesn't fix everything, right? It doesn't solve every problem, but as far as dividing up the housework and being able to help each other with it, it has made that so much easier. And then in regards to our kids, it's also very easy to incorporate our kids into housework and, and expecting them to take care of their own things too. In the past, we had all these toys and our kids were little and I would look at it and I wouldn't, a lot of days I wouldn't even ask them to pick it up because it felt like it was too much and it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming to me. So of course it was overwhelming to them. So I would be like, okay, I'll put a show on for them. I will just pick it all up. But then I felt guilty that I wasn't having them help and I know they should learn how to take care of their own things. So again, as we reduce the inventory, then I felt like, oh, now it is a very manageable amount for them to take care of it on their own. In fact, I think we should work to match the inventory level with our children's age and stage. And they really should be able to take care of like 90% of keeping their things picked up and put away. And so that's really a lot lower inventory than most of us are used to or what marketing tells us um, it should look like when we have kids. But here's what else was, what is really cool and unexpected when it came to the kids. When our kids were little, I, you know, I was looking at preschools and different activities and dance classes and different things that our girls could be in, they were the oldest. And I think it was really motivated by feeling like I'm not doing a good job as a mom, so I should find some better influences for them to be around. And so let's get them into church programs and you know different things where at least they'll be learning something and they'll be, uh, they'll I don't know that they'll be having like better influences around them or something like that, right? And this was uh, I think very subconscious. I wasn't actively thinking this, but I look back and I'm like, well, I didn't feel like a good mom because I couldn't stay up in my house, even though the two should not be correlated, right? You can be a very good mom and have a messy house, but the messages my messy house was sending me was I'm not a good mom. And so then I'm like, okay, what, what activities can I put my kids in so that they still turn out well, right? And now, again, I referenced the book Simplicity Parenting that suggests our kids need a very low-key childhood, right? Like that is how their brains develop the best and they are the most uh, able to regulate their own emotions. They're happy, they're content. Like they don't actually need a lot of stuff and activities. But now I can believe that and I can implement that and be like, I'm okay if our kids spend most of the summer at home and we're not involved in a lot of activities, I can be totally okay with that because I do feel like there is value in them being home with me and, partic and participating in our household and all the things that it takes to run that and playing outside and just being kids this summer, right? But in the past, that would have been hard for me to believe because I didn't think I was doing a good job and that it wasn't a benefit for them to be in our messy house all of the time. Okay, so like I said, these ones are getting a little leggy. And so I got a couple of grow lights. This is where you lose all your money in trying to grow your own food, <laughs> right? Like you buy the trays and you buy the seeds and you buy lights. I didn't want to mess with like the big lights that hang over them. And so I really like this style now where it has like the three different just arms that you can angle. And then it either has a clamp base or this kind of base. Does that work? I don't know. <laughs> At least the trays can sit on this, on the feet, so that will help. So the other thing that is cool is that it has a timer on it, because I don't run and run it 24 seven. Like um, these have been growing really well. It stays nice and warm out here. It's a south facing window. And so I don't need it to run all of the time. And so you can select for it to go three hours, nine hours or 12 hours. So I think I'll just do 12 hours during the day, like come out and turn it on in the morning. The other thing it says is that it has um, like different spectrum. So full spectrum promotes flowering and fruiting. Red spectrum promotes the growth of plants. See, you all would know more about this. Mixed spectrum promotes plant growth, flowering and fruiting. So we might just meet, only need red spectrum for right now. I'll probably just do mixed, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, and then for now, we don't need it on the seeds that aren't up, right? So for now, all three can go over here. I don't know how like close they should be or anything either. All right. <laughs> I have two of them, so I can always kind of mix it around and move it around. It's okay. I'm actually very much okay with this being an experiment and learning. I wasn't always okay with that in the beginning. 
but now I realize that it's okay to learn from year to year. And so <laughs> it's okay if this doesn't work the first time, we'll figure it out. Okay, as soon as it gets nice outside, um, it's just still been very cold here in Minnesota, I'll start bringing them outside. Another question is, do you have anything that's not considered minimalist? And you know, certainly when I'm putting my life on display for the internet, I'm always accused of many things that uh, from the other person's perspective is not minimalist, which is fine. It doesn't actually really bother me. So things like throw pillows or having a suburban or a whole separate building that we use for an office and guest house. And honestly, I could probably agree because we wouldn't need throw pillows, <laughs> right? Or not as many as we have. We could probably get by with a smaller vehicle. We wouldn't need a whole second building that we're gonna heat and cool to have as an office and to have guests, right? But what's the point of doing all of this if we don't then get to have some freedom in our choices and decide what we enjoy and what we don't and what we wanna have a little bit more of and what we simply don't. So do I have excessive throw pillows? A little bit, and that's totally fine. Um, I probably have more cake stands than I would need. Again, fine. But I'm secure in like what we're doing, why we're doing it, how much we have of each thing in our house. And I really feel like after eight years, uh, we've really got it fine tuned. Now it's always changing as the kids change ages and stages and seasons of life. So there, it, it does flex and it changes, but I just feel like I have a really good grasp now on how much inventory I can manage. I should probably say how little inventory I can manage, how little we need to live a very full life. Um, it still blows me away uh, that we just hardly need any stuff. And actually my sister was just referencing um, a study because of lifestyle creep, because we have been continued to be marketed to and say, oh no, but you need this and you need that. You need a bigger house, you need a newer car, you need a fancier vacation, you need nicer clothes, you need brand name shoes. But it was talking about how so many hours of our work week are just to maintain our current lifestyle. And so it's been fascinating to me, you know, our house is 1300 square feet. And even when we moved in, you know, we had talked about like, oh, we'll lift up our house and put a, ba a new basement under it. That would almost double the square footage, right? Or we'll add on to it, or for sure we'll attach a garage or we'll do this or we'll do that. And we don't even actually really talk about that anymore. Besides the fact that we'd like to get for our boys for them to have an actual normal size bedroom at some point, we are so content in our home right now and I'm content with my clothes and my shoes and my vehicles and the things that we have, the little bit of decor that we have and I don't feel like I need to change it or to keep up with new trends or things like that. Do I enjoy changing out a few pieces from time to time, getting a couple new shirts from time to time? Of course, yes, but it's not the same as it was in the past. I, I feel no need to keep up with our neighbors or others around us um, or anything like that and and we have been able now to promote travel and, and doing those types of things. And so it's fascinating to me that as we have gotten rid of all of this stuff that we just weren't using, right? Like we have not made our life more difficult. This is not a project in suffering as Courtney Carver would say. Uh, but we've just gotten rid of the stuff we're not using how it has freed up so much extra time and space. And again, it doesn't always compute. It doesn't always think like declutter my house, have so much more time, energy, peace of mind, lifestyle, everything, right? It's, it, it doesn't always feel logical um, because the benefits are so much greater than the little bit of work that it took to declutter our house. Like when you look at it in comparison, like that year I spent getting rid of 80% of our stuff, like the benefits that we've been able to continue to enjoy year after year after year after year, it's incredible. It's, it's remarkable. It, it's so awesome. And so that's why I, that's why I just continue to make video after video saying, declutter your house, please. No, really, please declutter your house. Like it's gonna be so good. Like I believe in this so much and every year I believe in it even more than the year before it. And so it's, it's just been so awesome. And this, just to be out here on an afternoon planting seeds and figuring out grow lights and all of this, um, it has just, it's been really fun. And I do have, so I have two more trays here, right? Each of these holds 72. I'm gonna have a lot of like little plants <laughs> growing, it's so fun. I had ordered more vegetable seeds, but they haven't come yet. And so um, I think I'm just gonna go to the hardware store and get some because in Minnesota, we plant around Memorial Day. And so, uh, you know, ideally you wanna start like four to six weeks out. So we're kind of at that four week mark now. And so I'm just gonna go to the home improvement store and get some more seeds. I definitely wanna start some tomatoes and some peppers and maybe some squash. 
So um, I do have a bunch of seeds for like spinach and lettuce and kale, but those don't need to be started indoors, right? So that's my plan. Um, get more seeds and do more planting and then maybe, I don't know, figure out this light situation. But it's been a lot of fun just to get to learn this and practice it, right? And then it'll be super fun when we can actually get outside and put it in the garden. <laughs> that will be the real fun. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for hanging out with me today. It's always more fun when we can do it together. But uh, if you have any other questions about minimalism, go ahead and reply to the first comment down below and I will try to answer those in a follow-up video as well. All right, well, I love you. If you have any gardening tips for me, I am all ears. I have learned so much for, from you, so thank you. But I love you, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you again soon.